we've, we've reached the part of our service where we're going to observe an ordinance which the Lord Jesus commanded his followers to do in remembrance of him. We partake of the Lord's table because we believe that he died for our sins. We proclaim his death by eating the bread which represents his body and we drink the cup which represents his, his blood. To prepare our hearts for this, we consider a passage of scripture and this morning we're going to take a look at uh, Luke chapter 7 verse 36 and following. In this passage, Jesus had been invited to the home of a Pharisee by the name of Simon to uh, have a dinner. And as he reclined at the table, a woman from the city came in to this house and stood behind Jesus, and she was weeping. And she began to wet his feet with her tears and to dry his feet with her hair. And she was repeatedly kissing his feet. And she had a vial of perfume which she anointed his feet with this perfume. Simon was the name of the Pharisee and he uh, looked at this and he, it provoked thoughts within his mind. He said if he was thinking within himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know what sort of woman this is that's touching him, that she's a sinner. Well, Jesus responded to this man's thoughts, and his response shows that he not only knew who this woman was, but he knew the heart of Simon. He responded by telling a parable. And he talked about a debtor or a money lender that had two debtors. One debtor owed him 500 denarii, which is about a year and a half wage. And uh, the other one owed him 50, which is about a month and a half wage. They, they, neither one were able to pay back their debt. So the money lender forgave their debts. And Jesus asked Simon the question, which one of these two debtors will love him the most? And uh, Simon says, well, I suppose the one that was forgiven the most. And Jesus said, well, that's the correct answer. And then he called her, his attention to the woman who was there. And he compared and contrasted the reception that she had given him with the reception that Simon had given him. He says, she's been washing my feet with her tears, and you didn't even give me uh, some water to wash my feet. She's repeatedly kissed my feet, and you didn't even give me a kiss when I entered. And she, get, she uh, anointed my feet with expensive perfume. You didn't even anoint my head with oil. This statement must have rocked the thinking of Simon. And Jesus, here's what Jesus said. For this reason I say to you that her sins, which are many, have been forgiven. For she loved much. But he who loves little, who, who has forgiven little, loves little. Jesus is saying to Simon that the reason this woman has poured out her love on me is because her many sins were forgiven. He's not saying that her great love was the cause of her being forgiven, but that her great love is the evidence that she had been forgiven already. Jesus then said to the woman, your sins have been forgiven. The point of the parable that Jesus told was that it was the forgiveness of their debt that brought about the love of the debtor for the money lender. So how did this woman come to be forgiven of her sins? Well, Jesus tells her in verse 50 that your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This woman had come to have faith in Jesus. Her faith resulted in her salvation from sin. And her expressions of love for Jesus were evidence of her saving faith. 
and her saving faith resulted in the forgiveness of her sins. This incident occurred before Jesus went to the cross and died for her sins. And when he died on the cross, he died not only for hers, but for all the sins of people who were trusting in and expecting the Messiah to come and for all of those who since that time have put their faith in the death of Christ on the cross. We believe that our sins had separated us from God and that Christ died in our place. And we believe that because of him bringing us to faith in Christ that our sins have been forgiven and that he has reconciled us to God. Peter is writing to the first century Christians and he describes our situation. This lady saw Jesus, she was loved him there, but we do not see him. And Peter says, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Christian, as you partake of this Lord's Supper, remember that you are observing the greatest act of love that has ever been done. God sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. His death satisfied the righteous wrath of God against our sins let the knowledge that your sins have been forgiven promote your love for him. Before you partake, turn from any known sin for which Jesus paid a terrible price. And if there's anyone here who realized that you really don't have much love for Jesus, that you really believe that basically you're a pretty good person, that uh, God will be satisfied with whatever goodness you can produce and have produced. Think again. Remember that Jesus suffered separation from the Father when he hung on the cross for sins, not for his own, but for sins of men. Our sins were serious enough to separate us from God forever. That's the reason that Jesus died in this manner. We're by nature dead in sins and trespasses. And apart from the death of Jesus Christ, there is no forgiveness of sins. You must repent and believe in Jesus Christ for your, to be forgiven. We urge you to turn to him and to be saved. Otherwise, we ask that you refrain from partaking of the Lord's Supper. It is for those whose sins have been forgiven and who love the Lord Jesus. The men will come forward now and serve us and partake when your heart is prepared. <laughs>